Lots of you are, are associated either directly with SGACC or with one of the many groups that are part of the Smarter Growth Alliance for Charles County. Um, you know, when you look around the room here and this beautiful setting of the Madawoman Creek, it, it really does sort of, uh, you know, crystallize why we were all doing what we were doing. And the last six years, I got involved in, I think, around 2010 or 2011. And this has been a really long process. Um, but when we look back, it really was the citizens who were the engine of this thing. Um, without you guys signing petitions, going to the SGACC website or whatever group website you would go to, um, and going on our Facebook page and attending hearings and things like that, all those single actions were very, very important um, in having an influence on the process. Um, but we wouldn't have been able to do any of this without the right elected officials in office. It, it started with, with Candace Quinn, uh, way back when. And, and I think that now we have uh, three commissioners who have been truly supportive and, and heroic in how they've sort of carried this comprehensive plan process through. Ken, Ken Robinson, Amanda Stewart. Well, <laughs> this, if you looked around the state, I mean, I've been talking to certain people who are sort of in the know of, of these kinds of things that are going on around the state. What happened in Charles County with this comprehensive plan really is truly historic. Um, you know, I, I think what we have here is a chance, uh, you know, for smart growth. We finally have that opportunity and for preservation of land. And, you know, I was talking to some people before, you know, it used to be, you know, when I first moved here in 2000, um, it was almost verboten to, to really identify yourself as somebody that wanted to see preservation, wanted to see the county plan in a smarter way. It wasn't part of the culture necessarily, and I think, I think things have changed a lot now, and I think that, that you all are, are the reason for that. Um, you know, speaking out is not an easy thing to do. Going to public hearings and, and putting yourself out there um, can be intimidating, but I think that the involvement that all of you had made it possible uh, so that other people could also get involved. And, and we ended up having thousands of people signing our petitions, so we know that we were successful in building a real grassroots movement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out, I already recognize Ken Robinson, Peter Murphy, and Amanda Stewart. And, oh wait, we have a, um, we also have uh, Nancy Shirtler on the Planning Commission. And, and, and she's, watch her on the planning commission she's so incredibly well prepared um, with what she does so we really appreciate that um, we also have Courtney Edmonds who's here. I always enjoyed watching him when he was the planning commission chair um, you know, and, that, and that was part of it I mean the, the idea that you could have someone at that leadership level um, taking on the powers that be and I thought that was really impressive that he was willing to 
to do that. And, and again, that was not, at least from the Charles County that I knew, that was not something that was exactly traditional. Um, so I really think that we've got to give ourselves a pat on the back for, for sort of breaking uh, with the tradition in the county and, and, and moving forward to something new. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I wanted to say. Was there anything else I wanted to say? <laughs> At one point, I want Ken to come up here and say a few words because he has the, he really has some things to say, I think. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I want. Oh, one more thing. Such a good we, MC. No, I, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I wrote all this stuff down, but, I, but I, I'm thinking of things as we do it. The, the one thing is, is that the, the process and the movement of having the SJACC come together it really wouldn't have been able to be successful if we didn't have somebody like Kimberly Golden Brandt mm -hmm. yeah. and Drew Schmidt Perkins from the Council of Maryland. Mm -hmm. they, they have day to day uh, control over the operation, and, and it really was an operation. Um, and Kimberly has a background in planning, and while I think all of us who were involved in this were, were pretty smart. I mean, we're, we're smart people. Many of us had college degrees. I mean, we're smart. But the thing is, Kimberly had a background in planning. She had worked in Carroll County. And because she knew specifically how the process worked, she was able to guide us through and sort of tell us what things meant. And, and I think that that was invaluable. And so we appreciate the help of Kimberly Golden Brandt and a thousand friends of Maryland and Drew the CBF is here, Trustee Bay Foundation, we've got to give a round of applause to that. Let me turn it to oh, Madam Woman Watershed Society, there they are. Let me give this uh, microphone now over to Ken Robinson because he has some amazing things to say right now. No pressure, no pressure. No one told me I was talking. Uh, seriously, as I look out over this audience and it is so overwhelming to see so many people come out not only today but as Maury mentioned to all the hearings I, I had to be there you didn't and we really appreciate that but seven years ago I know most of the people in this room today seven years ago I probably knew one or two of you and it was because of your participation and honestly your help in educating us on the issues that we're here today to be able to celebrate the 2012, 2016, whatever you want to call it, comprehensive plan. But you know, for the first four years, I tended to be on the minority side of things, along with my former colleague, Commissioner President Candace King Kelly. But I will say that if it wasn't for us, we wouldn't have gotten through to have the election that really mattered, the 2014 election that brought in my amazing colleague, Amanda Stewart. You know, as elected officials, you put yourself out there and you expect to be targeted and attacked, but so many of you who were just volunteers and just wanted a better Charles County also had to go through that. Maury mentioned Courtney Edmonds. What he had yeah. to put up with as chair of the Planning Commission was despicable. Yeah. Yes. 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 It truly was. Uh, honestly, you know, we see the political climate in the country now and how horrible it is. We saw a preview of that with the way Courtney Edmonds was treated back in 2012 and 2013. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So it is so important to be involved and be engaged. And, you know, the fight isn't over yet. You know, here's, we're on a winning streak right now. Cross County Connector, not happening. so-called Indian Head Tech Park, not happening. The developer alignment of Western Parkway, not happening. And most importantly, the comprehensive plan, happening. But the hard work really begins now, and I can assure you that Commissioners Stewart, Murphy, and myself will be all over county staff to make sure the zoning corresponds to the plan that we just passed. And I hate to say this, guys, but every time we do a zoning change, it means a public hearing. And so anytime you can come out and speak out in favor of the zoning changes, that goes a long way towards making it happen. I think what we have proven, especially in the last two years, is that public comment counts. 
you know that in, you know, prior to this current board, there, there were so many hearings on the comp plan, including the more than 2,000 comments that were quote unquote ignored. As you can see, they were not ignored. We took those previous comments very seriously and ultimately led to where we are today. But again, this is not about the elected officials. This is not about Commissioner Murphy, Stewart, and myself. This is really about you. Because if you folks didn't come out there, we wouldn't have had a leg to stand on. You beat the bad guys. And I hate to say this, they were the bad guys. And as an example, you saw how the opposition just disappeared as we got closer and closer to this plan. They realized not only were they not going to win, they also realized they were wrong. And, and they were wrong. And we were right, and you were right. And I can never thank you enough for being there for us, because sometimes it does get hard. You know, you say, well, I'm used to getting attacked. You know, even <laughs> Donald Trump said, it hurt a little bit the other night. <laughs> so there's some truth to that. But again, thank you so much. I want to call up my colleague, Amanda Stewart, to join me. Hello. Everything changed when Amanda's husband, Alvin, came up to me one day in Starbucks and said, my wife is thinking about running for commissioner. And I said, where does she live? And I said, District 3. And I said, please. Yes, please. She has to run. And it turned out to be a godsend for the county. And Amanda's a lot younger than I am, so you're going to have her around for a very long time. <laughs> So, happy birthday to Amanda. She just turned 30. 30 plus um, some years. Thank you. I always say it's good moisturizer. I just want to thank you just for a moment. This is unbelievable. I remember about three or four years ago, three going on four years ago, my husband came, yep, thank you. <laughs> Alvin came home one day and said, you know, I have a meeting I want you to go with me. I have a meeting to go to, I want you to go with me. And I didn't realize what he was getting me into, I didn't realize. And someone asked me, a young person yesterday, I think about 17 or 18, asked me yesterday, well, how did you get started? And I said, because I went to an elected officials meeting Let's say in January, and I came back in February, and I came back in March, and by March, I had my notes, and that elected official was contradicting what he had said in January. Not that he changed his position, which we can, but I expect you to be able to justify your change of position, but he was speaking from a new place of understanding, and so I challenged him on that. And um, being folks who know me, I'm a little outspoken at times, professionally, politely, but I can be outspoken. And one day the Maryland Independent was there. And that's how it all started. I just started going to different meetings, voicing my opinion. And a lot of you here today, I started meeting at various events. And I just want to thank you for your support. It's been amazing. And it's been amazing to be able to work with um, Ken and Peter and, and understanding that if you stand firm and if you know the right thing to do and you stand by your word, you can get things done. And sometimes, people will try to bash you. People will try to say untruths about you. And you could be riding down the road and you'll see somebody put, put up a billboard with your name on it. <laughs> and I think that backfired on them. That's why they took it down. The one thing I said, the promise I made, and I didn't make a lot of promises when I was running for office, but the one promise I made, I, I said that I will always do my best to be informed, I will always do research, I will always ask questions, and I will always listen, no matter what side you're on. And I believe today I have held that truth in, you, in my actions, you see that in my actions, and I will... I'm looking forward to moving on and making sure, like Ken said, about making sure our zoning matches our comp plan. And so um, I just want to thank everyone. And just remember, we needed you a few years ago. We need you today. And we especially will need you in a year and a half from now when we 
start running for office again. <laughs> we have made some books that are not really friendly. And I understand, I'm, I'm, I'm a big girl, I understand that it's going to be twice as hard to run for re-election. But with your help and your support, we have a very well-organized group. And I just appreciate everything you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything that you will do in the future to help to make sure that the vision that we have started to make sure it's, um, it's laid out for the county will continue. So just thank you so much. Thanks to everyone. Yeah. I have to say this, two special thank yous, of course, to my husband and my son, because I was telling someone earlier, this is a family affair. I wouldn't be able to do this without Alvin or Alan's support, so thank yeah. you for your And I have to say thank you to Candace Quinn Kelly. Yeah. 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 talking about the last, let's say, let's just say three years ago, four years ago, you might not have seen me at the government building, but we were at home in the living room watching you on TV and your dedication and your spunk and your ability to say during difficult times, no, we're not doing that or yes, we're gonna move forward and you holding people accountable just because it makes sense, it just helps me to know that when I go to work on Tuesday, doing a difficult conversation, that I can keep on going because I know you could. And from your strength, it allows me to do the job that I have to do. So I just thank you too. Ken, does he want to say a few words? Yeah. yeah. Come on, TQK! TQK! Well, let me just say, first of all, God bless you. Thank you, Amanda. That was very touching, and I hope I really deserve that. Yes, you do. Um, I see so many familiar faces, and when I came in earlier today, um, and I just have to have a big shout out to Bonnie and Alex and Meredith, and I know, let's hear it for these wonderful people. So I'll make this brief, but I want to start with Bonnie and Alex, and way back in, gosh, 2005, when I was a commissioner for filling out a term, um, I first really encountered them over Brian's Road, and you made that a victory. Thank you. Yes. That was so important to get that change. I remember that hearing that night. And Alex was videotaping, which was very novel in the day, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, what was particularly interesting as a new commissioner at the time was the disrespect with which these individuals were treated, as well as the people, I mean, lots of people showed up there that evening, taxpaying county citizens, and they were mistreated and disrespected. And so I fast forward to my time, and very often you saw that again. You saw people mistreating you at hearings, disregarding you, but as Ken and Amanda both said, then the tide changed, and Laurie, pointed out there was a time when you I'm gonna remember from nobody wanted to really admit it and then somehow because of all of your work, because you kept showing up when anybody else would have said, I'm gonna go get a root canal tonight, I think that'll be more fun. <laughs> yes. You kept showing up and then you educated us. I learned so much from you, Bonnie and Mayor and so many others. You got groups like uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, a thousand friends, people that really had clout, even when the people in our county didn't recognize it, it was reassuring us to know that somebody else sees how important this is and will help us and support us in trying to care, and by us I mean elected officials at the time. But you kept doing it, and you kept coming out, and you're the core group, you're the key people, you're the ones that are still here today. And as Ken said, and I want to leave you with a positive note, but the work is going to get tough. These zoning hearings are going to be brutal. And you're going to be there because you're the ones that have saved this county. And as I came down the road and I looked out here, I thought to myself, how magnificent. And to Bonnie and to Mayor and everyone else in this room, nobody is ever, ever going to thank you 
the way you deserve to be thank you. <laughs> Courtney, no one can ever, ever thank you for what you endured and you put out with. And I would ask for a big He sat there month after month and just held the line, made sure that they couldn't get too far ahead. And so, in closing, don't give up. We'll never be able to thank you enough. You will never see the fruits of your labor. I'm sure of it. But generations to come will. Because if we didn't stop it now, here and in these years, it would have been too far gone. The water and sewer lines would have been approved and in the ground. It would have been over. You saved this county. And in doing so, you'll never know how much you may have saved this world and this planet. So thank you and God bless you. You have been my inspiration. Tonight, Jim Long and the Mad Woman Watershed Society have a paddle event. Where they're going to be paddling. Where are they going to, where are you going to launch at? Oh, Madison Park. Okay, Madeline Park at 6 o'clock? Uh, Madeline Park in Indian Head. The Atlantic Kayak Company, Judy Lathrop is here. She's going to be guiding it. Uh, and please sign up if you would so we know how many you expect at a sign-in where the uh, picture mats were on the picnic table uh, just over there. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's it. Actually, Courtney has something to say, and that's, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> something seriously I mean like any man I have pride in everything and every time I hear people talk about the planning commission it's like oh I remember Courtney got beat up so bad I remember Courtney used to get beat up on Monday night so bad and everything like that it's almost like you know I'm being I'm being uh, memorialized as being beat up every other Monday for four years or something so I don't want to leave that thought in your mind that I got beat up all the time and enjoyed it or something like that so the thought that I would like to leave in your mind is that when you have ordinary but organized people you can achieve extraordinary results yeah. and so the reason why i'm here today is not to hear stories about me getting beat up on monday nights at the county building but i'm here today to thank you all for being such amazing residents yes. and amazing neighbors because monday after monday seeing people come up fighting for our county fighting for what's right, fighting for a better place for us and our children, right? That's much more important than me getting beat up all the time. <laughs> that's why you want to live in Charles County, and that's why we're proud of the people that are around us because of the work that you all put in. I am dead serious. If I was getting my butt kicked so bad, and I didn't think that I was working with and on behalf of good people, I would have given up a long time before. Here, here. I'm dead serious. So I'm here to Thank you. you all. For the sacrifice that you all put in, and, and I think someone said before, for the education that you all provided me. Um, I, could, I could name people, but I would be afraid to leave someone out. But again, you all have done so much to educate me and educate others. And so which for me, it's just an honor to be here with you all today to celebrate this grand achievement and to give my thanks for the current commissioners for voting this comprehensive plan through and basically doing the right thing. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. David. You don't want to say anything? Okay. Um, I hope you all are not going to leave uh, because we have a lot of food and beer and all kinds of stuff. Oh, and then we want to do a big picture. That's important. I think I'll be on. So, come on up here to the microphone, please. Meanwhile, I want to thank Anton for doing the sound for free for us. So everyone, because you've all just made history, we need to capture that on film. Um, we're going to take this banner down and move it out to in front of the tree right here. And I'm going to take a group photo. I want all of you here um, who were involved in this effort and everyone who lives in Charles County, let's get out there together. Um, we're going to take this down. I've got a couple of other posters 
we will do this as quickly and painlessly as possible. But um, this this picture is going to go on the wall um, of our county commissioners. That's what those um, mats were that you framed when you came in. We just want to make sure that um, this important moment is captured for the future. Thank you. I have one more announcement. Um, I'm going to invite everyone, personally invite everyone out to my second annual Back to School Community Fiesta. It's going to be Saturday, coming Saturday, August 6th at Matter Woman Middle School in Waldorf. And so it's a fun day for all the kids. Bring your children, bring your grandchildren. There's a lot of resources for adults also, um, um, activities for elementary age children all the way up to high school. So again, it's a free event. It starts at 11 a.m. at Matter Woman Middle School in Waldorf. If you want more information about it, like me on Facebook, and I'm posting out the information about the address, the time, just as a reminder. So thank you. Ready? Go. All right, everybody, line up. We're going to head out there. Oh, nice. Okay. Get it. Thank you. 